Welcome to Polk Today. I'm your host, Brian Lacey. Uh, Polk Today is a daily show airing Monday through Friday right here on PGTV with useful county information, weather with Billy Abernathy, and highlights from PGTV programs along with previewing upcoming meetings. Today is Thursday, September 18th, 2014. For most people, taking out the trash is part of their normal routine. But not all trash is the same, and there are items that you can't take to the curb. Household hazardous waste is not collected with your curbside service. This includes batteries, old paint, used motor oil, or pesticides. These items have to be taken to the county's household hazardous waste collection facility. The good news is there's no additional fee for Polk County's residents for this service. So where is the collection facility located and what items do they take? Katie Yoxel with Keep Polk County Beautiful has all the details. Hi, I'm Katie Yoxall with Keep Polk County Beautiful and today I'm here at Household Hazardous Waste at the Landfill with Mike Ferguson. Hi Mike, thanks for having me. Hi Katie, how are you? I'm good. Can you go on ahead and tell us a little bit about Household Hazardous Waste? Like what items are accepted here? Household Hazardous Waste would be your cleaners or your paints or your fertilizer you'd use at your home. Basically stuff you can buy at Walmart or Home Depot. Okay, is there a program for businesses or is this just for residents? We actually do have a program for businesses. There's some fees involved and there's some paperwork that needs to be done. Residents can use the facility at no extra charge. What are the hours of operation here at Household Hazardous Waste? The hours of operation are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturday from 7.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. What about items like sharps, um, needles that people use in home health care? Sharps, we actually have a program with the Polk County Health Department. We provide sharp containers for the residents that are distributed through the health departments throughout the county. Okay, so household hazardous waste is not collected curbside. You have to bring it here to the facility? It is not collected curbside. This is the only permanent facility we have in the county. But we do collection events throughout the year. Okay, where are you guys located? We're located at the North Central Landfill. The physical address is 5 Environmental Loop South, Winter Haven, Florida. Thank you, Mike, for meeting with me today. I'm Katie Yoxall, and thank you for doing your part to keep Polk County beautiful. The language of art is expressed in many ways. The story of art could not be told without the proper backdrop. Polk County has no shortage on sites that host and support the awareness for arts and culture in the community. Now, one such venue is the Polk Museum of Art. Polk Museum of Art enhances the lives of our varied communities by bringing people and art together. Jane Waters Thomas and Adam Justice have the details on a new student exhibit on display. Thank you, Brian. We are at the beautiful Polk Museum of Art with curator Adam Justice today, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the very cool things that go on at Polk Museum of Art right here in Polk County. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Tell me all the great stuff you're doing. Well, like our, our motto says, we're never the same museum. So there's always something different going on here, whether it's new exhibitions, new events, new programs. Um, right now, we have two exhibitions that are closing in just a couple of weeks. But in September, in the middle of September, we're going to have an exhibition on loan from the MFA in Boston. And it's over 100 drawings of concept car designs. And so that will be on display as the Lake Mirror Classic is happening downtown in Lakeland. So actually, we're Polk County's museum, which is very right. cool, right? Right. And you often do programs that um, really enhance other programs that are going on in our community, like mm -hmm. in Lakeland or over in Winter Haven. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about how that works. Well, we've really tried to, to broaden our reach within Polk County. Mm -hmm. uh, we realize that Polk County is such a large county that it's, it's hard to hit everywhere all the time, but right. I think that we've made some massive strides in the past couple of years. Uh, one of the projects that we, uh, we look forward to every year is our Florida Outdoor Sculpture Competition. Absolutely. And it is on display here in Lakeland, um, also in Winter Haven, and in this past year we actually reached Sebring as well. So it's um, actually a project that has now gone beyond the county, but we have been talking with uh, other partners within the county, other organizations, and we're hoping that 
that project can slowly kind of become integrated into other towns and other places within the county. That's very exciting. And I know that you do a lot of stuff with school children and school age mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. in our community. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do in programming for the children that sure. come to this museum? We have what we've um, come to call the Invisible Museum. Mm -hmm. It's basically the museum beyond the walls, the physical walls of the museum. And we have one outreach instructor, Laura Putnam, who visits uh, several sites throughout the county. And uh, whether they be um, after school programs, uh, whether they be programs for teen mothers or uh, uh, persons with disabilities of some sort, she goes out and connects with these people with art. And it's really not, um, it's not to bring them to the museum, but it's to bring the museum to them. Wonderful. Um, we also have an education department that um, has a very unique relationship with the uh, county school board. We have a contract with the school board every year that is renewed and they help us finance all the student exhibitions that we have here. We have the George Jenkins Student Gallery, uh, wherein we have 10 exhibitions of student art every year. And the school board actually helps us buy materials and framing equipment to put those exhibitions on and it's organized by our education department. I know that those children are beyond excited when they get to a museum like this yeah. and see their stuff. And you know, as, as a museum curator, I often call our student gallery my reset button. It's kind of a breath of fresh air. Uh -huh. I mean, when you're surrounded by beautiful things all day and what you do, um, it's easy to kind of forget that you're looking at these beautiful objects. Absolutely. And to go into the student gallery and to see all these beautiful things that these students are producing throughout the county, it's really a new perspective. It's a new way of seeing, and it's a way of seeing that we have lost, that air filters have built up and, and we have learned not to see that way. And so right. to go in there and see all of these great things the students are doing is really, from a curatorial standpoint, really quite beautiful. So you have a lot of really great things upcoming in the next few months. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Sure. In September, we'll be opening a new exhibition on loan from the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. It's called Future Retro. And uh, they are original drawings of concept cars from the 40s and 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. So that will open on September 20th. And then in November, we're going to have our second annual Fall for Art Festival which includes um, what we uh, traditionally call gems and jewels inside the museum, where some local jewelry designers come in and sell their work. But in the parking lot of the museum, one weekend, we will also have a local arts festival similar to our Mayfair. Uh, but it's gonna be smaller in scale, and it's gonna be for local artists for them to start getting their work out and connecting with people and start building their own collection. So it's really uh, connecting emerging local artists with emerging local collectors. That is November. great news. Wonderful. Adam, thank you so much for thank sharing you, with us what's coming up. And um, we look forward to all the wonderful things at the Polk Museum of Art. Thank you. Back to you, Brian. Staying on top of the events here at Polk today includes a look at the weather for the latest forecast conditions and a look at what's brewing in the tropics. We take you to the Emergency Operations Center with EOC coordinator Billy Abernathy. Hey, Billy. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Bill Abernathy, Polk County Emergency Management from the Emergency Operations Center. This is your weather brief for Thursday, September 18, 2014. For today, we, we can expect partly sunny skies with a high of 92, low of 73, with a humidity of 100%. 30% chance of thunderstorms mainly after 2 p.m., with winds being from the north at 5 to 7 miles per hour. And for Friday, we can expect a high of 87, Low of 70, tomorrow with an approaching cold front and with the upper level energy that it, that it brings, we're going to have an 80% chance of thunderstorms throughout the day tomorrow and tomorrow night. Uh, winds will be from the northeast at 3 to 8 miles per hour. And for Saturday, we can expect a high of 86, low of 71, 60% chance of afternoon thunderstorms. Winds will be from the northeast at 5 to 9 miles per hour. And for Sunday, we can expect a high of around 90, low of 71, 40% chance of thunderstorms. Winds will be generally from the southwest at 6 miles per hour. And now to the tropics. Emergency management's monitoring a wave just east of the Lesser Antilles, identified with the white circle. This system is moving west at 15 to 17 miles an hour. Convection is limited to this system due to the shear in the upper atmosphere. We're also monitoring a wave uh, uh, that has a 108 millibar low associated with it, identified with the blue circle. This system is moving to the west at 15 miles per hour. 
Sahara air is limiting convection of this tropical system. We're also monitoring a wave at the eastern Atlantic just off the coast of Africa, identified with the yellow circle. This system is largely disorganized currently. Models are indicating with some guidance or this system to move to the northwest at uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Development of this system in 48 hours is at 10% and in five days at 20%. I'm Bill Abernathy, Polk County Emergency Management. Have a great day. I'll see you back here tomorrow on PGTV. Back to you, Brian. Thanks, Billy. That's going to do it for today's show. As a reminder, to keep current with programs and progress in the county, visit us online at polk-county.net or follow us on Facebook and Twitter or even check out the Polk County YouTube channel. I invite you to join us Friday to continue our trip down the Heritage Trail, a highlight from Sports Central, and introduce you to a new feature, Polking Around with Hank Longo. For Polk Today, I'm Brian Lacey, and we'll see you tomorrow.